So the 3.2 update had some pretty huge lore drops, huh? I see why the achievement category is Sumeru, the Rainforest of Lore. We learned a lot of different things, but I wanted to put a focus on the Descenders. So at the end of the 3.2 Archon Quest, Nahida says that according to Fatui Intel, there have been four Descenders. Descenders are external beings that don't belong to this world. She presumes that the first is the Heavenly Principles. The second and third are unknown, and she needs to verify. And the fourth is the Traveler. Let's break down this list. According to Nahida, the first Descender was the Heavenly Principles. Let's rewind back to what we know about all things heavenly from Enkanamiya. According to the book Before Sun and Moon, first the Eternal Throne of Heaven came and the Primordial One fought the Seven Sovereigns. They drove the bishops to darkness and created a world suitable for humanity. Later, the Second Throne came and tore Heaven and Earth asunder in a war. As Eboshi also tells us, this led to the fall of the Unified Civilization and the sinking of Enkonomiya. So both the Primordial One and the Second Throne are not originally from this corner of the universe. I mean, Enjo literally told us he was looking for proof that the gods in Celestia are alien invaders who destroyed the Unified Civilization. In the context of the Fatui intel, however, the Heavenly Principles should refer to the Second Throne or the current gods in Celestia, and not the Primordial One. The main reason for this is you can't really be an alien to a world that you create, right? But this issue brings up an interesting point. How much do the Fatui even know about the Primordial One? Keep in mind, the only history we have of the Primordial One in the Second Throne is from Enjo, before Sun and Moon, and Eboshi. And this was intentional. Eboshi makes it clear that the Heavenly Order did not want anyone who remembered this history to remain on Earth. And as he said, keep all that you have seen here in Enkonomiya an eternal secret. Orobashi was sentenced to death by Celestia for accidentally learning this. The Fatui do know about the False Sky, of course, and we're still not sure what this secret held by Irminsul is. I think there's a lot of strong evidence for a physical firmament, maybe even Fanez's eggshell separating the universe and the microcosm, and with the fruit of Irminsul creating constellations, etc, etc. But I'm inclined to think it has a double meaning. As in, before sun and moon is equivalent to before the false sky, or before the false gods. And this is the secret that the heavenly principles want to erase. Because this is a secret that the Fatui are pursuing, I'm inclined to also think that they have some indication or inkling of the Primordial One's existence. And I think that's why they're documenting Descenders in the first place. But more on that later. Alright, so on to number two and number three. As Nahida describes, it seems likely that Descenders are also described as Outlanders in some texts. So here are some contenders. Number one, the Outlander who fell in love with Asili. In records of Jeyuin Karst, there is a story about a traveler from afar who swore an oath to Asili at the Lunar Palace of the Moon Sisters. Thirty days after, a great catastrophe struck, and they were separated and lost their memories. Oh hey, another memory wipe. I think this one is unlikely to be one of the four, just because this traveler existed during the time of the Moon Sisters, and thus the unified civilization, and the catastrophe was probably the coming of the Second Throne. So it's unlikely, assuming that the numbering is chronological. Number two, Eamonlocker. Eamonlocker was the icebreaker outlander who lived during the time of the fall of Sal Vignagnir and the namesake of the Eamonlocker clan in Mondstadt. He went on a mission to save Sal Vignagnir, but came back too late, and not too much is known about him after that. We really don't have any other information on him, and also with both number one and number two, they're called outlanders, but that could simply refer to someone from afar. Somewhere, somewhere else in Tefat, <laughs> somewhere else in the Dark Sea, I don't know. Number three, Alice. Honestly, the most likely candidate so far. She clearly has a fascination with Tevat, as seen in her travel guides and her 
weird hilly trill experiments. But she also knows a lot of things that don't fit in Tevat. Like, she introduced the concept of idols and their magazines to Barbara. And there's an example of Alice making a reference to the real-life Rubicon River in the main Chasm World Quest. But also, the KFC chicken wings make it clear that Alice has not only an understanding of the boundaries of Tevat, but also has some sort of drive or mission to maintain them. Also, Alice may be a, just a huge reference to Alice in Wonderland, so in terms of being a descender, mm, pretty good chances. Number four. Maybe the others in the Hexen Circle? So, like Mona's master or Ryan daughter. There's really nothing to back this up aside from a reach where it's like, oh, in the Traveler's voice line about alchemy, he says that it's like secretive but not uncommon in other worlds, and Ryan daughter is a master alchemist, so maybe bringing alchemy to Conria or something. I don't know. Like I said, it's a reach. Number five, the author of Vera's Melancholy. If you haven't read it, Vera's Melancholy is straight up sci-fi, with galaxy wars and the starry seas. The editor even leaves a note at the very end of it saying like, hey, the author kind of disappeared living the high life somewhere, so if you happen to see them in your corner of the universe, let them know that they need to write more. So that's the short list, and it's also very likely, highly probable that we just haven't met some of these people yet. And also, the Fatui's list isn't necessarily comprehensive, so they could be missing people. But speaking of someone who is missing... The conversation with Nahida at length asserts that the Abyss sibling is not a descender. But as twins, should they not have the same origin? This is also confounding because during the opening cutscene, the Sustainer explicitly calls the twins Outlanders. Outlanders, plural. But regardless, the twin is not a descender, according to the Fatui intel. So even if the Abyss sibling is a descender, there's still two other unknowns, according to the Fatui. I haven't quite formulated my thoughts completely on why this is the case with the sibling, but there seems to be two main options. The first option is that they are not actually twins. But that's tinfoil hat theory territory, beyond the scope of this video. The second is that they are twins, but for some reason, the sibling began getting recorded by Irminsoul. Did the sibling, uh, like, touch the tree or something? Or maybe, consider this. If a descender dies on Tevat, do they also return to the ley lines? I'm just saying, we've seen plenty of ghosts already. I want to circle back to a point I made earlier about why the Fatui even make notes about who the Descenders are. Well, there's a lot of lore in Genshin, and it's often very obfuscated and sometimes in conflict with each other and other sources. And this is due to the concept of an unreliable narrator. Typically, you accept the narration of a story to be true to the reality of the fictional world, and that's our default nature as an audience. But often, this narration can be untrustworthy for a number of reasons, whereby a narrator either unintentionally or intentionally withholds, distorts, or embellishes information. And for a narrator to be deemed unreliable, we have to be introduced to another frame of reference that contradicts the narrator, but is also, for some reason or another, deemed to be more credible. There are some outright examples of this. Um, for example, we maybe have a specific bard who might embellish a bit, and probably Dane who shows a great amount of personal bias and also self-confessed memory problems. Even Scaramouche's memories seem inconsistent with written records we find in Inazuma. But now to 3.2. We got a taste of this with Makoto's Sakura tree, but with Greater Lord Rukitavada being memory wiped from everyone, we have solid evidence that memory can and is readily tampered with. Those from Tevat, including NPCs, books, interactables, etc., are essentially untrustworthy. On a technical note, I should mention that many might reject this premise as an unreliable narrator because their perception of the world is true to reality. 
However, I would argue that because time and memories can and are being modified in some capacity, I think this certainly qualifies as unreliable narration. Information is being obscured. Regardless of semantics, the underlying fact remains. We cannot necessarily trust info given at face value, as our experience as the Traveler contradicts the current reality of the world. For example, in a fourth wall breaking effort, many things in game, including the ending of the Aranyaka questline, are different whether you see them before or after Ruka Devata's deletion. There's a really good Reddit post uh, compiling all these examples, and I'll link it in the description below. So, why is this important? I mentioned before that the history of the Second Throne, or before the False Sky, before the False Gods, is a secret that the Heavenly Principles want to erase from the world. But it's the secret that both the Abyss Order and probably the Fatui want to reveal. In fact, it may be the entire reason for why they want to overthrow the gods in the first place. Nahida confirms that Traveler is not recorded in Irminsul, which means that Traveler and other Descenders are still an independent frame of reference for recording the truth of this world. This was foreshadowed by Zhongli during his first story quest. History records, but history may be changed. This incident proved that. Time is a mighty force, and histories twist in its flow. I need to find a better way of recording history in order to engrave its truth. Stone carvings were one such ancient method, but unchanging stone, immovable earth, even one such as myself. Someday we may all disappear. Zhongli. Therefore, I thought of you, Traveler. You are one who crosses the Celestial Atlas, and who passes through countless worlds. If our history is engraved in your memory, it will one day accompany you into another world. As long as a traveler like you is able to record what happened, then a backup of sorts will exist for times and tides of Tevat. Well, that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell or whatever. Comment with your own ideas about the Descenders. And you can catch me co-streaming on Twitch with Aladesu. So come and say hi sometime. See you next time.